man. I believe that God is going to drop a spiritual bomb in this place. I got to tell you that tonight is going to be a bad night for the devil. Did you hear what I said? I said tonight is going to be a bad night for the devil. I believe that tonight we are going to punk the devil. My assignment tonight is to deal with issues and things that cause us to get into the wrong flow. Because the wrong flow or the current, the wrong flow will never take us to the right destination. I believe wrong living never produces right blessings. And so I'm here to caution you and me tonight that if we are in the wrong flow, we're not going to see the goodness and the greatness of God. Experimenting with drugs will never lead to a good end. I've never met someone that said, uh, getting high and hitting rock and eight ball has got me closer to Jesus. I've never heard somebody say, oh yeah man, smoking pot, that just improves my prayer life. I've never, I've never heard or met anybody I've never met anybody that said, uh, uh, I, listen, listen, the wrong flow never produces good results. Taking off your clothes will never end well. It will never end well. Never. It's the wrong flow. Young lady, don't you dare do anything to keep a guy, to keep a relationship. If he wants you to do something so that you will be able to keep him, then this is what you need to do tonight. With that guy, you need to take that guy and you need to flush him out of your life. Just the flow, flush him out, flush him out. Just like you flush a toilet and junk comes out of that toilet, flush that guy, flush that relationship, flush him out of your life. I remember being in high school. And, and having the wrong flow in my life. And I was playing football in high school. And I know you're looking at me and you're like, dude, you're like five foot nothing. But I want to tell you, in, in, in San Antonio, I was tall. Okay, I was tall. I remember after this one particular football game, dude, I thought I was bad. Dude, I thought I was big stuff. I thought I was bad. I, I felt tall. I felt like five foot five. I mean, I just felt tall tall we had just come back from a football game that we won where I blocked the the winning field goal to help us win the game and dude I thought I was big stuff dude I, I mean I thought I was it we arrive at my house my friend and I from church and there was a party that was happening down the street. It was an after party, an after football party. And I told my friend, dude, we need to go to that party. We need to go to that party and we need to just see how everybody's doing. And, and my friend, we were looking at each other and I already felt like the conviction of the Holy Spirit, dude, that's the wrong flow. That's not where you belong. That's not, that's not the flow that God has for you. But then I started to spiritualize it. How many of you know, you, you know how to do that? I'm like, dude, we're going to be light in the midst of darkness. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And we spiritually convinced ourselves that we should be at this party. And so my friend and I were walking to this party. I mean, the party was thumping. I was like, boom, boom. I mean, the party was going, just going nuts. We could see the lights. The music was loud. And we walked into the party, and you would have thought that their grandmother showed up to the party. Because I walked in, it was like, I mean, the music stopped. Everybody turns around and looks at us. And they're looking at us, and my friends are saying, dude, what are you doing here? You see, I had spent my life in high school trying to be a vocal witness for Christ. As a matter of fact, I was wearing my letterman, and in the back of my letterman, I had the words, John 3.16. And there I go walking into this party, and my friends immediately come up to me and say, Dude, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. Why is it? 
that people from the world know how Christians should live more than Christians know how they should live for the world. Why does the world have to tell us that we don't belong? We should know we don't belong. Everybody felt uncomfortable. Everybody felt uncomfortable. Dude, I felt uncomfortable. It was, it, it was like I, I could hear those old school sermons those old school sermons from those preachers that would say, if you're somewhere where you shouldn't belong and the Lord comes back, you better hope that you, you know, I mean, dude, I feel like the rapture's coming right now and I'm not going to make it. I told my friend, dude, we need to get out of here. We turned and walked out of the door. And as we're walking back to my house, I began to pray, God, forgive me for wanting to be in the wrong flow. For wanting to be in the wrong current. For wanting to fit in and be like everybody else. Listen, I am here tonight to be a human a, a, a yield sign, a stop sign to you tonight that you would understand that God wants to get us out of the wrong flow in our relationship with him. I'm going to be speaking out of Deuteronomy chapter 7. It's in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and beginning with verse number 1. It's on page 166 in my Bible. You can uh, pretend like you found it, and it may, or uh, actually allow me to read it to you. The Bible says this, beginning with verse number one, it says, When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are entering to possess, and drives out before you many nations, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Pezzarites, the Hivites, and Jebusites, seven nations larger and stronger than you. And when the Lord your God has delivered them over to you, you that you have defeated them, then you must destroy them totally. Make no treaty with them, show them no mercy. Do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons. For they will turn your children away from following me to serve other gods. And the Lord's anger will burn against you and will quickly destroy you. Verse number five, stay with me. This is what you are to do to them. Break down their altars. Smash their sacred stones, cut down the astroph poles, and burn their idols in the fire. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit right now would begin to descend over our hearts and minds. Any and everything that tries to compete against what you want to do tonight, I bind it in the name of Jesus. I pray that every thought be held captive and obedient to what you want to do with us. In the powerful name of Jesus we pray, amen. Amen. I'm going to say three things about this passage and then I'm going to shut up. The first thing that I want you to recognize, finding from verse number one and verse number two, the Bible says that when the Lord brings you into a land that you are going to experience victory in, you've got to do something. You've got to destroy the enemies that are there. You've got to completely get rid of the enemy. My first point tonight, if we're going to get out of the negative flow, the first thing that we've got to see tonight is, Point number one, don't play. Don't play. We've got to get serious about the enemies that try to keep us and hold us from serving God. God had promised them victory. God had promised them victory. And the Bible even says that these were nations that were stronger than them. In other words, without God, they were not going to have victory. 
And I want to tell you something. I don't care how good looking mama told you you are. I don't care how much skills you have on the football team or how fine guys tell you you are. If you don't have Jesus, if you don't submit your life to Jesus, if you don't give your life to Jesus, you'll never be happy. You'll never be complete. You'll never have peace. I'm amazed. Because as we read verses 1 and 2, he tells them, you've got to kill the enemies. Because if you don't kill them, they'll rise up and they'll kill you. Listen to me. Pornography will kill you. It's something that you may do in private. But it will rise up and it will choke you. And it will lie to you telling you, I got this. I've got this under control. I can stop anytime I want. I've, I've got this. I'm a royal ranger. I'm a missionette. I, I know whatsoever. You know, I, you know all that stuff. But if you don't kill the enemies that God has promised you victory over, they will rise up and they will attack you. These nations represented negative practices. These nations represented false gods and false power. God wants us tonight to deal with the things that are clogging our flow with God. Have you ever been in a service and you see somebody really receiving from God? I mean, you, you know, I mean, when you're receiving from God, you just look ugly. You just, I, I mean, if you know what I'm talking about. You're receiving from God and you just look, I mean, have you ever been there? You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. You got like all these boogers swinging around. Your eyes look like raccoons because of all the mascara running. I mean, I mean, you just, you, I mean, you're just feeling God. Have you ever, have you ever been in a service like that and you're off to the side and you're watching somebody else get blessed? And you're like, dude, I want to feel that. Dude, God, I want to feel your presence the way they're feeling it. Have you ever felt that way? God, I want what they're experiencing. Many times we fall into that frustration because there are things that are clogging our lives that are keeping us from experiencing the flow, the presence, the love of God. Just like God's people, he warned them. I'm going to give you victory over these things, but you're going to have to fight and you're going to have to destroy these enemies in your life. I remember, again, my point is don't play. I remember playing in high school. I remember playing church. I remember, I remember acting like I, like I was serving God. I'm amazed because in church, this is the only place where church people, Christians, practice Halloween 365 days a week, or a year rather. Meaning we put on masks. We act like people that we're really not. I remember being in high school, and uh, my room was the garage. Now, listen to me. Let me tell you something about Latinos. Uh, I don't know why we do this. We don't put cars in garages. We put people in garages. And I used to complain, Mom, why, why, do I, why does my room got to be in the garage? My, and my mom was like, your room's the biggest room in the house. Quit complaining. And I remember I was in high school, and my first period of class was football. And I remember that I would sleep in my sweats, and I would sleep on the floor. Not because I didn't have a bed, but because I did not want to make my bed in the morning. And so I would sleep on the floor with my sheets. And so when it was time to get up, I would grab my sheet, roll them in a ball, and throw them under the bed. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Dude, I had one of these dreams. Have you ever had one of those dreams where like a demon is fighting you? I had one of these dreams where there was this demon and he was fighting me and I was trying to talk but I could not talk. It was like something was holding my mouth and I was like, mm, mm, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood. Dude, I felt something evil in the room. I mean, I felt something evil. I, dude, I was scared. I was so scared, or in Spanish, I was scared. 
I was so scared. I felt an evil presence in the room. And dude, I had my sheets over me, but I refused to remove the sheets from my body. Dude, I'm sweating, beads of sweat are coming. I'm just profusely sweating, but I refuse to move the sheets. Because how many of you know demons cannot penetrate sheets? They just cannot do it. They cannot do it. They do not have the spiritual fortitude. I, I, I don't have a scripture for that, but I believe that. Finally, I said in myself, dude, I got to go to my mom's room. Because my mom knows how to pray. How many of you have moms that know how to pray? My mom knows how to pray. And I remember that I kept saying the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Because my mom taught me, if you feel a demonic spirit, you just say the blood of Jesus and the devil can't touch you. So I'm saying the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. I, di I didn't even want to breathe because I didn't want to skip to take a breath so the demon would go, you know, I'm, I didn't, I didn't want to stop. I'm like the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. I finally got up out of my sheets and I'm walking through the kitchen. And we used to have this black cat. We used to have this black cat. And I'm walking through the kitchen, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And all of a sudden, this cat jumps out. Rah! The blood of Jesus! The blood of Jesus! The blood of Jesus! Dude, I rebuked that cat nine times. Just in case. I'm walking through the hallway, and my dad used to have pictures of my aunts and uncles in the hallway. And I'm walking the blood of Jesus, and I'm looking. And I could swear, I could swear that these eyes were following me. So I'm walking through the kitchen rebuking my aunt, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Finally, I made it to my mom's room. I did not know how to tell her that I was playing God. I did not know how to tell her that I was not really serving the Lord. I did not know how to tell her that I really didn't have a relationship with God. How do you tell your mom that you're not serving God? So I woke her up. And I said, Mom, wake up. God's dealing with me. God's dealing with me. That sounds better than I'm not serving the Lord. Like a rocket, my mom jumps out of bed. She's ready to pray. We're going to pray. Right now, we're going to pray. She's ready. She's trying to wake up my dad. My dad, like, <laughs> didn't have a shirt on. It looked like a dead dog on his chest. <laughs> My mom, my mom begins to pray, and she prays so simply. She prays so passionate. She just begins to say, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I was so desperate. I was so into it. I'm like, yes, God. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Like, I'm in it. Like, I am ready to pray. At the end of the prayer, I felt the peace of God. And I was like, Mom, uh, maybe I should sleep here on the floor. Because if God wants to deal with me again, I won't have to walk all the way back here. You see, I was playing God. I was in the wrong flow. I went to church. I was even, at that point, the youth president of the youth department, whatever that is. But I was playing God. I sang the songs. I went to church. But I didn't have a relationship with God. And I'm here to speak to somebody tonight. 
that God has given you victory over nations and over things and practices, negative influences, and you're struggling and you're playing church. You're still cutting. You're still dealing with porn. You're still getting wasted. You're still acting one way in church and another way outside of church. And I'm here to tell you in the name of Jesus, God says through his word tonight, stop playing. Stop playing God because God knows the real us. He knows how we're really living. The Bible says in verse number one, he will drive out the nations before you. In other words, he promises us victory. Listen to me. We can stay saved. We can stay on fire for God. We can live for God, but we've got to kill the things that keep us from serving the Lord. Listen, in other words, if you want revival, keep your clothes on. If you want to experience the power of the Holy Spirit, don't depend on pizza to grow your youth ministry. Don't depend on Xbox tournaments, basketball tournaments, sleepovers, lock-ins. Begin to pray. Begin to seek God. Get passionate about His Spirit, and you will see God do wonderful things. Come on, give him praise. The Bible says in verse number two, and when the Lord your God has delivered them over to you and you have defeated them, then you must destroy them totally. I need to tell somebody tonight, there's some things that need to be destroyed in your life. There's some things that need to die. There's some relationships that need to die. You might have a boyfriend. You might have a girlfriend. And dude, you, you want them to serve God so much. You're believing that God's going to save them. But they're not, they're not helping you get close to God. They're drawing you away from God. And you're trying to convince yourself that you're going to be the person to win them to the Lord. But you're not. I'm not saying God can't do it. There's some things that need We need to tell somebody, listen, I love you. I love you, but I love him more. We need to tell some people, I want to be with you. I want to be with you. And some of you go like, you're so cute. I want to be with you. I want to be with you, but I want to be with him more. I need you. I need you, but I need him more. We must destroy them. The Bible even says in verse number two, make no treaty with them. In other, words, in other words, don't make a commitment. Don't make a commitment with the influences of the world. Don't you dare do it. Verse number three, look at this with me. Verse number three says this, do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons. For they will turn your children away from following me to serve other gods. And the Lord's anger will burn against you and will quickly destroy you. So my second point tonight is avoid the fleshly flow. Avoid the fleshly flow. The Bible says do not intermarry with them. In other words, don't have an intimate connection, an intimate relationship with a person that's going to draw you away from God. You see, these people, they used to practice not only idolatry, they would take their kids and they would throw them into the fire. They would sleep with temple prostitutes. They would worship the God of the sun. They would worship the God of the earth. They would worship trees. They were against God. And God wanted them completely destroyed because he knew that their influence upon their life was going to cause them to go astray. I'm here to tell you that God does not want us to get intimate. Listen to me. What has been in your bed? 
What has been into the intimate place of your sheets? I'm not talking about a person. I'm talking about the intimate sheets of your heart. The bed of your heart. The bed of your spirit. The bed of your mind. What have you allowed to take the place of a relationship with God? He wants you to be committed to him. I'm encouraging you, don't lower your standards. Keep yourself pure and clean before God. Determine to honor God with your body. It matters what you do with your body. It matters because your body belongs to God. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated because this is a generation that is praying for a Mr. Right, but they're settling for a Mr. Right now. The first guy that comes along and says you're cute. The first guy that comes along and says you're hot. The first guy that comes along and says you're beautiful. We get all worked up about that person. And we begin to forget everything else. And our attention gets placed on that person. Listen, I'm not here to preach against dating. I'm here to preach against anything that we place before God. Because God calls that an idol. And he says, you shall have no other gods before me. He wants to be the love of your life. He's crazy about you. He's nuts about you. He loves you. And he wants us to avoid fleshly flames. Allow me to illustrate this. It was my senior year, Pastor John, it was my senior year of high school. I was going to be going into Bible school. And I used to work at the Holiday Inn Hotel. And I was a bellman at the Holiday Inn. And we have this thing in San Antonio called Fiesta. It's like a week long of where they shut down the streets. And it's, it's, like, a, it's like, a, like a Latino Mardi Gras. I mean, it's just like real crazy and stuff. I was working as a bellman, raising money to go to Bible school. And I remember that I'm walking by the hot tub delivering some food. And there was this group of about five or six young ladies in the hot tub. And they called me over. And they began to ask me questions about the menu. But I noticed that they were starting to order things from the menu that were not on the menu. And dude, I got nervous. Dude, I got nervous. Dude, I was like, oh, dude. I mean, I I mean, dude, I was a virgin. I had never slept with it. I mean, I mean, I was, I mean, this was, I was like, Jesus! I immediately left. I walked away. I immediately left. We get a call for room service. And it was these young ladies ordering room service. And I remember that I began to take the food up to their room. And I knocked on the door. And when I knocked on the door, the door opened and it was pitch black. I could hear people giggling. And they said to bring in the food. And dude, I got so scared. I mean, the, the, I mean, the ketchup was shaking and stuff. I mean, and I'm like, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. I mean, I was just, I was scared. I put the food down. And these young ladies turned on the lights. And one of them spoke up and said, can you handle all six of us right now? I'm like, what, 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 what? Like, like, like right now? Like right now? I'm like, I can't even handle one of you. And it was like, listen to me, it was like immediately the Spirit of God came upon my life. Immediately, it was like the Spirit of God says, this is not my best for you. This is a counterfeit. These are assassins. They're here to destroy and kill the love and the anointing that I have for your life. You think that you might be able to get away with this, but I'm here. The Spirit of God is here, and I see everything. And dude, I'm not going to lie. For a minute, for a minute there, there was like, there was like something in me that said, dude, you got to do, you got to do this. Dude, you gotta do, you gotta hit it, don't babysit it. I mean, you gotta do this. But the Spirit of God 
spoke to me. This is a counterfeit. And I remember that I tried leaving. And one of the girls said, I don't understand. You're trying to leave and others are trying to come in. And it was the presence of God. It was the anointing of God. I had made up my mind that I was going to serve the Lord no matter what. And I'm here to tell you tonight that just like these Israelite people, they had to determine who they were going to serve, what they were going to do when they faced the influences, the negative flow of the nations around them. You are going to have to make a decision tonight. What are you going to do with your relationship with God? Choose today whom you'll serve, but stop playing. Stop treating God like a cheap day. Stop treating this like a Sesame Street episode. Commit tonight, commit tonight to get out of the negative flow, to get out of the fleshly flow. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20, flee from sexual morality. All other sins a man or a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you've received from God, you are not your own. You've been bought at a price. Therefore, honor God. Honor God with your body. The Bible says in verse number four, they will turn your sons away from following me. The enemy wants to turn your passion Away from God. Don't let him do it. Don't let him do it. He wants to steal your passion. He wants to steal the call of God upon your life. I had friends in high school that would make fun of me because they knew I was a virgin. They saw that John 3.16 on my letterman and they said, dude, dude, you're, dude, you're messed up. Dude, you're gay. You're gay. You don't like girls. We never see you making out with anybody. We never see, dude, you're messed up. You can't, dude, I slept with this girl. I slept with that girl. And they had all these hickeys like if they were badges. And I finally got fed up. I finally stood up one time. I said, dude, you know what? The difference between you and me, the difference between you and me is this. I can always be like you, but you can't always be like me. And I'm here to tell you tonight. That you've got a purpose in your heart that you're going to live for God. And maybe you've messed up. Maybe you've messed up. Maybe the nations around you, the, the influencing voices around you, just maybe you said, dude, I, I shouldn't have drank that. I, sh I shouldn't have did that. And you messed up. I want you to know that there's love and there's forgiveness. And God can cleanse you. And God loves you and accepts you. And he wants to have a relationship and unclog that negative flow in your life. I'm going to be closing here in a few moments. I want to share this with you. My last point. Not only should we not play. Point number two. Not only should we avoid the fleshly flow. But my last point is this. We need to get out of the negative flow. Look at verse number five. The Bible says this. This is what you are to do to them. Break down their altars. Smash their sacred stones. Cut down their astroph poles. And burn their idols in the fire. For you are a people Holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possessions. God loves you. I just, I, I want you to know it and I, I don't know how else to tell you. He's crazy about you. He loves you. And he wants to have a relationship. He says, but you've got to do something. I'm going to give you the victory, but you, you've got to burn the relationships. 
you got to smash down those idols. You got to get aggressive. You got to get serious about being serious. You got to make a commitment even though you got to do it alone, even though people around you aren't encouraging you, even though your parents aren't saved. You've got to make the choice tonight to be God's people because He loves you. He loves you. Do not be yoked with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? What fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. And God said, I will live with them walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people God is picking you tonight he's choosing you you see I grew up in a home dysfunctional messed up just just fruit loop crazy I mean just cuckoos my dad would come home drunk and beat my mom. I remember hiding under beds. I remember hearing things break. I remember hiding in closets. But one day, Jesus came in to my heart. He came into my life. Everything didn't turn out perfect immediately, but I had somebody to go to. I had somebody who loved me. I had somebody who believed in me. I had somebody that told me that I wasn't a failure, but that I was a victor, that I was more than a conqueror. And I'm here to tell you, I don't know what kind of home you come from, but I know who claims you, and his name is Jesus. He says, you belong to me. And I love you, says God. You may have not been conceived in the mind of your parents, but you were conceived in the mind of God. Somebody said you're fat. Somebody said you're ugly. Somebody said you're good for nothing. Somebody says you can never do anything right. You're a failure. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. God's word says right here that you are treasured, that you're important, that you're valuable. That you're somebody. And he wants to have a relationship with you. Um, I'm done. The Holy Spirit is here. If you're done playing God, if you're done playing church, if you're done acting, if you're willing to take down the mask, if you're willing to get out of the wrong flow to get into the right flow, this altar call is going to be for you. This isn't for those that have everything together. This isn't for those that are completely coordinated and have their life perfect.